played in the city that at the moment is the football capital of the country must surely be the most promising and glamorous local derby and a long history of the football league with near neighbors both bearing the titles of champions clashing in this only the second week of the new season manchester city the reigning champions of the football league against manchester united the champions of europe a game graced by some of the finest players in football in this country today on the manchester city side two of the new internationals in sale Ramsey's side Colin Bell wearing number eight, who does so much work in midfield. And Mike Summerby wearing number nine, who hasn't quite clicked yet for the England side, uh, but whose club performances surely rank him as one of the outstanding leaders in the game at the moment. On the opposite side, of course, Bobby Charlton, 30 years of age, certainly one of the world's outstanding players, and certainly one of the most respected players in football. Georgie Best wearing number seven, the Irish international, again one of the most talented players in the world. Rather surprised the Manchester United side, disappointed their fans. Uh, Copel playing in his second game comes at number two in place of Shea Brennan. David Seidler comes in place of uh, Bill Fawkes at number five. Nobby Styles of course plays, Tony Dunn plays. Fitzpatrick comes in for Crerand, who's on the touchline. And another surprise, Alan Garling is in at number ten in place of Dennis Law. The substitute will be Frankie Bird. Crowd settling down to enjoy this match. And a look now at the Manchester City team. It is pretty well as expected. Bobby Kennedy comes in at number two. Of course, uh, Tony Brook, the captain, is still injured. The substitute, Tony Coleman. And Bobby Owen, the new signing from Berry, playing at number ten. The referee, Dennis Smith of Gloucestershire, enjoys the reputation among footballers of being one of the best, just checking with his lines and that already it's going to be Manchester United to kick off. Frank Copel, only 19 years of age, coming to this white-hot atmosphere at Main Road for his first really testing senior match. He's played one game before. Ken Mulhern, City goalkeeper. A salute to Bobby Owen. Lee Aston from Manchester United Aston who played so well against Benfica in that European Cup final at Wembley Fitzpatrick coming for the short one Fitzpatrick four beautiful ball to Garling a well wrapped by Garling and a real chance for United and Best missed an open goal George Best hangs his head and he could have scored within the first half minute Mike Doyle going to take the throw for Manchester City. And the main road team will be pleased. In fact, it's fouled to get by Dennis Smith. The main road team will be pleased that the pressure's off that defence for a moment. Dennis Smith and the players not happy about the ball. And the encouraging thing in the first half minute there for Matt Busby, the Manchester United manager, was that uh, young Alan Garling had the courage to turn with that ball and the time wasn't overawed by the occasion to create that chance for George Best. <laughs> Dennis Smith looking quite relaxed. Already there's been a little bit of trouble in the crowd. There was a special appeal by Manchester's chief constable uh, for spectators to behave today. That appeal was issued yesterday, but a number of people have been injured by flying bottles even before the game started. Now Charlton for Manchester United. Doyle for City. This is Byrne. This, of course, as the programme says, a never-ending argument in Manchester between blue and red. Manchester United in the darker shirts, showing on your screen, red shirts. Manchester City, of course, wearing sky blue. Tony Dunn with a kick. conceding the throw and these opening minutes for the players really feeling their way you can expect to see one or two mistakes because there really is a kind of European night atmosphere about this match already Fitzpatrick he gets the free kick
Tony Dunn taking the kick. Doyle for City. Sowerby's trying to screen him, but beaten in the air by Sadler. Both teams already in their anxiety and nervousness and the tension of the opening couple of minutes making mistakes. It's Patrick with the throw to Charlton. Head. Gowling who moved intelligently into space. Heslop now for City. Neil Young. Oaks. Now he's trying to cover in the back, but that should be Stepney's. Nobby Styles. Styles being booed already, and he's hardly touched the ball yet. Aston. The field for hands. Players were a bit confused as to whether it was a throw or hands. Mike Doyle to take a throw. Owen. The star of Charlton. Best making ground up front. As best. He's pleased by Pardo. Gowling loose outside. Kidd to Fitzpatrick. Manchester United, in spite of all these changes, looking to more shoot short side just in these first few minutes. People had Fitzpatrick for United, one of the hardest young tacklers in the game. Good destroyer. Five minutes gone in this match. No score, but a really sizzling start. Owen. Pro given to Manchester City. Nobby Styles was quick to appeal, so it was the other way, but Doyle with the throw. Summerbeam. Sadler penalised. Didn't really hurt Sonobi too much, I don't think, but Sadler too anxious to get through him, and Sonobi screened it. And the kick given the other way. Obviously, Sonobi offended slightly before Sadler went through that ball. Tony down with the kick. One for Kidd to fight for, beaten by Heslop. Oaks, Doyle, one power into chase, A very, very cool play by Frank Copel, this teenager, just flicking it back to Stepney, he looked to have been playing the Manchester United side for season. Kennedy now to Mulher. Sadler, Owen for City, and Summerby offside. Max Summerby played a lot, made a lot of ground then from when he lost the ball in the air to Sadler, but he must have made a little bit too much as he was waiting for the through ball. Really wonderful day for football. The ground just giving a little bit, not too hard. The sun shining and not too much wind either. Now Aston. His best. Corner. The strength of the sun clearly shown in that uh, picture there. Of George Best walks into the shadow, which is just on the six-yard line almost. It'll be John Aston taking the corner. Left foot is in the right wing. Should be in swinging. Didn't quite get hold of it. Owen. Doyle. Summerby. Styles. 
Tyson. Now Bell. Owen. This is Lee. Bell. And Styles must find Stephanie. Both teams just a little bit over eager and over anxious. Our best. What a good start to this match. Wonderful control there by Best in killing the ball. Well, there are too many blue shirts there. Keslov now. It's Kennedy. Fitzpatrick now to Kidd. Hardo to Doyle. Or Young, rather, he's dropped back. Fitzpatrick, Charlton, Bell for City. Brian Kidd for United. Best. Garling's moved into space, but Best taking it the other way. Aston. Heslop for City. This is Young. Kidd. Crowd booing for what they thought was a late tackle by Nobby Stars, but the referee was there and wave play on. Gowling. Aston. Kennedy just managed to get that late tackle in. Linesman's flags up, a free kick to Manchester City. Ten minutes gone and no score. The crowd can almost touch the atmosphere in this main road ground. And Styles, that was a bad throw by Mulhern, or well read by Styles, who anticipated it. Uh, Heslop. Kid. Brian Kidd, who gets through so much work up front. Remember, he was only 19 on the day of the European Cup final against Benfica when he got a cup in his medal. And Doyle. And Doyle was quite right there. He was played into trouble by Mulhern. And he did the safe and simple thing. Some of these showing great determination. Foul, it must be a foul against Coppell. And this youngster can certainly tackle, he goes right in. Oaks. Done. A Kennedy. Fitzpatrick. Flicked on by Aston. Heslop for City. Kennedy, Doyle, Owen to Doyle, and Doyle did well to get that shot in, Mike Doyle, under 23 international, and one of the most promising midfield players, Sadler going right through Summerby, people say he can't tackle, but my word, that was a real tackle, best, it harried and worried all the time. Didn't he do well to get away with it? Pity the pass wasn't a good one. Dangerous kicking against David Sadler. But in fact, I think what happened there was that some of he ducked very, very low. But the referee has given the free kick. David Sadler, who didn't play in United's uh, opening match. Kennedy. Doyle. Must be the goalkeepers, or it should be. Under terrible pressure now, and he did well to get through to it the second time. Francis Lee apologizes for that uh, rather late kick, and the referee has given a free kick. Has off again. Doyle. 
Breslau. Colin Bell to Pardo. First time Pardo's really broken trying to get the overlap. Oaks. Goal kick. Despite a match for the appeal for the corner, and the referee was right. The two Manchester United players ducked out of the way. Uh, this is stupid of Mike Summerby, and I would think that Malcolm Allison, the Manchester City coach, and Joe Mercer, the Manchester City manager, will have a word to say to Mike Summerby, because it's ridiculous if you get sent off for arguing with the referee. To lose a player that's cost nearly 100,000 quid in a match of this kind, uh, because he argues with the referee, is really is very unprofessional. Been taken away. That was a bad tackle. No question about it. And his name's going in the book. And I think he might consider himself just a bit lucky. He's been spoken to by the referee already. George Heslop, the captain, wearing number five. The last count we had, 50 people have been injured on the terraces already, and some have been taken to hospital. Now, Tony Dunn, still in pain, but uh, back in motion. Our bench. Inviting the Manchester defenders to come and get it, the city defenders. Garling. Beck. Fitzpatrick. But he didn't play it the other way. Jordan was loose. A bell. Doyle breaking with him. These two boys, the midfield motors for Manchester City. Some of me. And a flash off the ball between Fitzpatrick and Doyle. And again, the referee saw what happened. Fitzpatrick saying, what for? Again, I would suspect there that Fitzpatrick went through with a tackle after Doyle had parted company with the ball. And once the players get the message that this is a referee who's watching as well, who's aware of what's going on when the ball's been delivered, aware of what's going on off the ball, they'll cut some of this late stuff out. Pardo, taken by Styles. Styles is by himself, the rest of the side's behind him. They were all back in defence, now best. Styles has gone hunting up front. There he is, best. Good ball by Styles, and a good tackle by Pardo. Glyn Pardo, not giving George Best too much room. Look there at the Manchester City defensive lineup. They've got six players in the six yard box. Seven now. Oh, Sadler's in there too. Good handling by Ken Mulhern. Bobby Kennedy. Bell. Kid. Gowling. Aston. Aston's got best outside. Best making ground. There he is. Aston. Well, John Aston won't be very pleased that he didn't test the goalkeeper with that. Five minutes to go in the first half. I reckon about two or three minutes of injury time. And still looking for the first goal. Carlton. Let's face it, I suppose you could say that Manchester United have created the best two chances so far. Best had one, and the other one, the one that John Aston just missed. Pell. I think a lot 
lot of time. He's very cool about it. He couldn't find anyone to give it to. There's Owen to Bell. Doyle's calling for the ball, but it's some of best to chase There's two defenders between him and the goal Jordy Best just a little bit over anxious he's certainly been given not a lot of room by any means they try to keep him out on the outside Charlton for Manchester United. Garling trying to break up from Alan Garling, number 10. And he's there! Good, brave goalkeeping by Mulhern. Mulhern came out quickly there. You could see the defence was in trouble. The ball ran for Alan Garling. Just a little bit too far. And he gave Mulhern the chance to get it. Two minutes of injury time gone. Well, he won't save the corner. But in this first half, there's no doubt that uh, Manchester United have created the chances. They created two chances, uh, George Best and John Aston. The best chance was George Best in the first 30 seconds. But it's Manchester City who've been doing most of the attacking. Young with a corner. Aston. And the half-time whistle goes there as Lee went through with that tackle. And Nobby Stiles is having a word with Lee. And it has lot the captain rigs him away. So there we are, no score at half-time. And a pity there to see a player stretched out on the pitch as the others leave. John Aston was caught with a late tackle. And most of the fouls in the first half have been of that type. With players going through after the ball's gone when they've got no chance of getting it at all but committing themselves early and catching the player when he's already parted company with the ball. But still, a very entertaining first half, full of good football. Well, I wonder whether John Aston will be able to come back for the start of the second half, clearly in great pain, being helped off the field now by Wilf McGuinness, the assistant trainer, and Jack Crompton, uh, the trainer. Aston, the victim of that late tackle, and just coming into the picture now is the Manchester United substitute, Francis Byrne. Manchester City kicking off at the start of this second half, and Manchester United have got their substitute on the field, as we suspected. John Aston, the victim of that tackle, not back on the field, and in his place, Francis Byrne. Burns, who played in most of Manchester United's senior matches last season, wearing number 12, the substitute number 12, lost his place just before the European Cup final in May. Bobby Styles got a knock on the head then. He and Bobby Owen collided. It's Burns. It's Patrick, moving it to Charlton. Kidd. Burns, good running by Burns. And good football too. Fitzpatrick! Young Jimmy Fitzpatrick right on the spot to have a pop there when it was set up for him by the substitute Francis Byrne. Franny Burns, who was so disappointed last season when he lost his senior place, and was a bit disappointed today when he was named a substitute. Uh, but in this first minute of the second half, when he's been on the field, he's made a real contribution to the match already. There he is again. Heslop. 
is Kennedy. Garling to Fitzpatrick. Very fine tackle there by Colin Bell. No question of a foul. Garling, Charlton, Dunn, and last season's matches by the way, uh, Manchester United won here at Main Road, but Manchester City uh, won at uh, Old Trafford with one of the best performances from any club side I saw in the whole of last season. Those youngsters may not have tickets, but they've certainly got one of the best views. But how they get down, I don't know. Just pull back from that shot. You can see where they're up to Nobby Styles. Free kick to Manchester City. Nearly 15 minutes gone in the second half. And the sad news of John Aston, Manchester United's outside left, is that he's got a hairline fracture of the right leg and has been taken to hospital. Been a little bit of late tackling. Oh, chance there! And the whistle's gone. The whistle's gone. It's no goal. No goal. He was offside. And most Manchester City supporters believe they were robbed at that moment. Here, the free kick again. Let's see if the referee was right. Neil Young, in a moment, comes into the picture on the edge of the shot. There he is, right on the outside. Uh, but the player to watch is number seven, right in the centre there. Uh, number seven, Francis Lee, and he is the man clearly offside. Young making a lot of ground, wasn't offside, but Lee was. So that slow motion proves that the referee and the linesman, whose flag was raised, they were right. Dennis Smith had no hesitation then, and the linesman also was right in line with play. Now uh, Owen, 15 minutes gone in the second half. I was saying that Aston, the victim of a late tackle, or a tackle when a player went through after committing himself. Chance here for Bell. Burns for United to Charlton. And that shot from Bell really beat Stepney out of sight. He never touched it. And that really was Manchester City's best chance of the whole match. Owen in possession now. Watch the build-up again. Let's just see the poise and power and balance of Colin Bell. Bell poaching at the far post. Ball bouncing awkwardly as it comes to him, but good control. And the sheer speed of the shot leaves Stepney terribly late. Just can't get to it. But now, watch Alex Stepney's reflex and agility as he gets back off the ground to cover his goal. The ball flicked back there, and Stepney still making ground. And it was a good job he did, too, to provide the cover that Manchester United needed and save the situation. The real mark of a quality goalkeeper. Now Fitzpatrick. Kennedy now to go in. Burns for United. Charlton. Here's Beth. <laughs> and it almost reached Brian Kidd. George Best there. Caught, I think, between the cross and the shot, really. Burns. Taken out by Hesler. Oaks. Looking for the spare man, Bell. Screened it. Oh. Styles and tackles so well. Then. Brian Kidd. Best hunting by himself, policed by Heslop. Hardo. 
Pardo looking for the... Owen. Good ball. Oaks. Patrick. Young Fitzpatrick getting through a lot of work. Doyle. And it's there by Sadler. And it's Young. Fitzpatrick. Burns. Charlton. Gowling. Kidd out there. Loose on the right. Line of defenders in front of it, though. Got to wait for support. Burns. Best. Copel. Oh, got to be taken again. And have now to Kennedy. Oaks. Owen. Sent me in the perfect position to cut it out. Best. Best alone again. He's got to wait for the support once more. Well, a lot of people say that George Best does too much of it by himself. And that may be true on occasion, but uh, once or twice a day he's had to wait a long time before anyone's come up to help him. Kid. swerving and a corner out of Manchester City taken by Lee another corner and a corner to be taken by Neil Young Charlton. United trying to break quickly. Francis Burns making a lot of ground in the middle. But not that much. Summerby. <laughs> Charlton now. Twenty minutes left for play in the second half. Still no score. Hotel doing the same thing. Great composure, this youngster. Doesn't seem to be worried by the occasion. Throw a player in the double end, Fitzpatrick. And Fitzpatrick wins the free kick. The dangerous kicking by Heslop and applauds the referee. Copel. Heslop just didn't get up enough for that. Garling was behind him, but the ball didn't quite come right to him. Young. Bell is causing this defense an awful lot of trouble. Burn. Charlton. 
as a style. Carlton. Dunn made space well. Best. Child and asking where the kick should be taken from. Got a good picture there of the wall and the goalkeeper behind. Doesn't look as the goalkeeper would see an awful lot from that angle. Charlton. Best! Good save. And what a neat move finishing with that header by George Best. Clearly worked out beforehand. Mulhern calling for help. Styles. Bobby Jarvin. His kid. Best. is what makes this slip of a lad one of the great players. Sheer speed. In a flash, that ball was streaking for goal and Mulherner got no chance at all. Fifteen minutes left. Bell. Bell being policed all the time by Fitzpatrick. Heldy one. players are going mad. But the referee says no. Doyle got to take the throw. that he couldn't get to it and David Sadler really had to turn that right over the bar with his head from right underneath remarkable piece of heading there by Sadler a quarter then to Manchester City and what a match this is turning out to be a moment ago George Best at the bar at one end after continuous City pressure now City with a screw right down again Doyle taking the corner. Sadler. Hesler. What a scramble. Young. Stephanie finally finding it safely in his hands. He couldn't have seen much of it as it came through, but my word, he held it well. A Gowling. This is Kidd. Oaks. From one end back we go to the other. Teams sweeping up and down the field. First, kind of blue tide goes one way and then the red tide surges back. Charlton to Gowley. His kid. Thing, Stephanie couldn't get there. David Sadler. And that is the marking throughout this match. Mike Summerlin. It's going to be Francis Lee to take the throw. No, he's leaving to Mike Doyle. Mike Doyle will try and get a long one, I should think, looking for a back header. This is a good long one, too, right at the post. Kennedy now to Pardo. 
Owen. Styles. And Styles goes, Styles goes in for a ball like that. He's got a 90% chance of getting it. In fact, a 100% chance. He really timed the tackle well, but he didn't use the ball as well. Owen. That's Bell, who's really giving them some trouble in this defense. Fitzpatrick trying to live with him, but finding it very difficult. I like this player, Mike Doyle. Surely an international of the future. We're playing injury time now. And can anyone steal a goal now in injury time that will certainly give them two points? Okay, moving about so quickly, it's quite possible. Styles. Now it's Lee. Oaks. Young. Blocked by Sadler. Young again. Sadler again. Lee. Well, throughout this match, there's always been something going on. Crowd beginning to believe now that these defences won't be broken. Beginning to leave. Minute of injury time gone. And there's the final whistle. No score in this meeting at Main Road between Manchester City, the league champions, and Manchester United, the European Cup holders. In the news of John Aston, he's got a broken leg and will be out of the game for some time. I must say, some of the tackling of this match was a little bit reckless, and it was a pity that the Aston injury followed a tackle of that type. Well, now, what about the two teams? Manchester City remain one of the most interesting mixtures in the country. They've got a lot of skill and speed and power, and they're going to give a lot of people a lot of pleasure once more this season. Manchester United, well, Matt Busby must be very pleased indeed with the way the youngsters brought more bite into the side, and they really fought very hard indeed, and made the others move too. And I think one or two of the more experienced players may well find themselves spectating for one or two more weeks. Well, now, a look at the other matches played today, the results. Arsenal, well, they had a 100% record, but they dropped a point at home today to Liverpool. Radford scored for them. Hunt equalised for Liverpool. Uh, Burnley scored their first win, an own goal by McNamee over Newcastle. Chelsea easily beat West Bromwich Albion by three goals to one. Baldwin got two and made the other for Tambling. Everton, rather surprisingly, were well beaten at home by Spurs. The goal scorers for Spurs, Greaves and Chivers. Leeds are the only 100% club in the first division. They beat Stoke City by two goals to nil. Mick Jones and Johansson, who came on as sub, scored the goals. Leicester are still without a win. Ipswich, a very good win there by three goals to one. The goal scorers Crawford, O'Rourke and Hegan. Leicester's goal was a penalty by David Nish. Sheffield Wednesday had a fairly emphatic win over Coventry City, who played their first game this season. The goals for Sheffield Wednesday, Phantom 2 and Ritchie. Mulhall scored Sunderland's goal in their win over Southampton by 1-0. And Jeff Hurst got the winner for West Ham in their match at home to Nottingham Forest. Queen's Park Rangers are still without a win. They lost at Wolves today by three goals to one. The goal scorers for Wolves, Wignall, Bailey and Duggan. And for Queen's Park Rangers, Ian Morgan. And now a look at the positions at the top of the first division. Leeds, six points out of six. West Ham and Arsenal each have five points. Sheffield Wednesday have four. Sunderland have four. And so too do Ipswich. That's it. I hope you enjoyed our match today. And don't forget there'll be another match of the day on BBC One next Saturday at 10.30. Now from me, goodbye.